Good morning and a happy Sabbath to you, and welcome to the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so happy that you could join with us today. I just want to mention a few names I see that are joining us. We have Ponzi, Becky, Stacey Ann, Delasia, Joseph, Leon, and Sheetal Singh. Thank you to each one of you and all the rest who have joined today's worship service. This Sabbath is the first Sabbath of December. This month is best known as the holiday season. It's where we celebrate the various holidays like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. The main part of the holiday season, however, is Christmas. It is the day everyone looks forward to. But like other holidays with a religious origin, people tend to use it for purposes that it was not intended for, and they tend to forget the true meaning of this month, the true meaning of Jesus' birth. As we go through this month, let us not get caught up in the formalities like shopping and parties, but let us always remember that Jesus is really the reason for the season. John 3.16 reminds us that the true meaning is God sending his son to die for us, that through him we might have eternal life. I pray that you would meditate on these thoughts, not only today, but throughout this coming month, especially as we approach the celebration of Christ's birth. I would like to remind you that we at the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church are so blessed by all of you who join us week after week to worship our God. We need your prayers and support, and we thank God for those of you who are already doing so. I would also like to ask that you would support the various ministries of this church, both through prayer and financial contribution. I would specifically like to ask that you would support the media ministry, We urgently need your financial contributions if these broadcasts are to continue. The media ministry relies on your financial support. You are the reason that the media ministries is here. Please pray for us that we can continue to bring messages like this to all of you. Additionally, I would like to remind you that the prayer and praise service that we have this afternoon will be held at 4 o'clock. That's 4 p.m. today. Please join us via YouTube, Facebook, and Zoom, and send in your requests. And as always, we love to hear from you. Please visit our website, remnantsdachurch.org, to request for prayers and to contact us. When you do so, don't forget to leave your name and where you are reaching out to us from. Today's message is titled, Confidence in Adversity, and is brought to us by Emmanuel Asaidu. We pray that we are a blessing to you, and once again, Welcome to the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to all those who are joining us for our Sabbath service. As we transition into the divine hour, shall we all lift up our voices and sing praises to our God and Father. I would like to invite you to join us as we open our hymnals to hymn number 12. Hymn number 12, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Our next hymn is going to be hymn number 121. 121, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Him number 125, 125, Joy to the World. We'll, we are going to sing the first, second, and the last stanza. While shepherds watch their flocks. We'll do the first, second, and last stanza. Oh, see. 
next hymn, let us all turn to hymn number 142. 142, Angels We Have Heard on High. Thirty one three zero. It came upon the midnight clear. We'll do the first and the last stanza only.
Good morning and happy Sabbath to everybody who is uh, attending or worshiping wherever you are. Um, I got the one announcement about the fruits. Uh, the shipper has uh, sent me an email saying that we might be getting the fruits this week, but they haven't told me exactly which day. But we will inform you as soon as the fruits come here. So those who have ordered them, please pick them up. And those who have not ordered, we have ordered some extra boxes. And if you would like to get them, please feel free to call the office or text me so we can uh, make sure that you have the fruits for the season. As you know that uh, this uh, flu season, and it's nice that people use vitamin C by citrus fruits that we get for the church. And today I would like to talk about immunity, boasting immunity. The fruit that I've been talking is antiviral, antibacterial, and antimicrobial properties it has got. Uh, the black plum protects the body from various infection. It also helps in cleansing the body for various toxins and radicals, free radicals, uh, by strengthening the immunity uh, system. The science has proved that the skin of the jamun fruit has the highest antioxidant property, which helps in, uh, by eating that, you get your immunity boosted. The four, uh, this is mainly for the women. Please take a uh, note of this. This fruit helps uh, very much in the, uh, it's a beneficial during the pregnancy and breastfeeding of your child because it has high nutrients contents, provides excellent nourishment, and aids in better development of the unborn baby. It has vitamin and minerals like calcium, potassium, vitamin C, and B, and et cetera, it, which are essential uh, for stronger bones and immunity. This fruit also regulates the blood sugar level within the mother, and they are perfect for mothers who have uh, gestational diabetes. They are very high in magnesium, which helps to develop the baby, and also helps in preventing premature births. Jamuns are very healthy for the heart and helps regulate the blood pressure and cholesterol level during the pregnancy. And it also helps in supporting the kidney health. It helps flushing out toxic from the kidneys. Jamun fruits have the power to break down the kidney stones, making them very effective remedy for early stage kidney stones. It regulates the blood pressure and levels and blood sugar levels in the body. Eating this fruit is very beneficial for, to diabetic kidney patients as the alkalides present in jamuns help produce the glucose level in the blood. So I hope the next, uh, for the one that I'll be talking, I'll let you tell you how to make and use those things uh, from this and where you can find them the fresh leaves, or the box, or the fruits, or the seeds. I'll let you know where and how you can prepare and use it for yourself rather than going and getting from the stores. So hope this has been beneficial to you and hope you'll listen to the next one, which is very important and you can make yourself. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
my dear fellow church members, we are certainly living in troublous times. If COVID has not taught us anything, it has taught us one thing. Within moments time, things can change. And certainly we all are experiencing that. I want to encourage you, although we are not able to come together into the sanctuary and worship, we can build our own Bethels, temples, and worship our Creator. I want to encourage you with reading this text from Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14, 15, and 16. It says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give, you, give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Certainly we all have experienced, I have personally experienced this COVID-19. It has affected my family. But God is good. He has great compassion on my family. He saved us. We see and hear every time in the news that hundreds and thousands of people are being snatched away because of this. My dear fellow members, let us not waste time. Like in the days of old, as they were eating and drinking, the time came and snatched them all. Scripture tells us to be wise. Let us all be wise unto our salvation, worshiping the Lord, serving him, because we are all ambassadors, ambassadors, and we are all called, and he says, my yoke is easy. Let us rejoice in the promises that scripture has for us, and let us be all instruments in the hands of God. Please do remember, the fruits are coming in. Please pick up your orders this week. Thank you. Our hymn of praise for this morning will be hymn number 538, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, hymn number 538. Thank you. 
for our gardener prayer. We do have a number of names. Kindly keep these names in your prayer, not just today, but during the week also. We have Meheret and uh, the nation of Ethiopia, Samson Faske, Robin and Pervin Peter, Maxwell Paul and family, Bobo Benjamin, Dr. and Mrs. C.P. Matthew, Eddie Cromwell, Shirley Harrison family, Sudai Pillai, Annie Rainey, Liz Aruldas, Pradaban Isaac, Mr. and Mrs. Aruldas, Emil John, Paul Jonakuti, Janet Smith, Esther Singh and family, Brian and family, Rati, Mrs. Lakshmama Beckham, Jay and Subhadra, Shashi Masi, Vimal and Binsi Matai, John Gode and family, Esther and Sheila Gode, Jenny, Samson and Brandon, Murthy, the country of Armenia, Maya Foster, Nimala Chavan, Joel Silvaraja, Ponzi family, Mawansa, Pastor Henry Fordham, Priya Anand, Robert's family, Tanya and Linda, Edwin Joseph, Helen Cromwell, Jane Ishwarao, Gill family, Saul Florence, Sunny Jack and family, Anton and Indira, Karen Roberts and family, Sydney, Lizzie Thomas, T.S. Abraham, Dilip and Usha Simpson, Bobby and Joy Kurian, Ram Naidu, Isaac Chavan, Rita, Nita, Aruna Chavan and families, Rani and Murli, Dina, Amber Batra, John Wydande, Molly Nutlapati, Sue Benjamin, Yomi, Patricia, Pastor Sajjan John and family, Pastor Reggie, Samuel and family, Mrs. C.K. John, Miss Mason and family, Christopher Cole and Zabeda and family. As far as possible, shall we kneel as we seek the Lord in prayer as Mr. Joseph Jerome will lead us beside the still waters. Father, now God, we thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you, Father. That's, that, that is so much. You have done so much for us. You have brought us through so much. At the same time, Father, you're still in our midst, working your way, working our salvation. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we move forward in 2020 and at the end of 2020, going into 2021, Father, those trials, tribulations, still in our midst. There are families right now, Father, who are suffering from this pandemic. Oh, Father, I pray and I ask and say thank you for protecting us. I pray, Father, that you will be with every individual who's going through this COVID-19 is not an easy task. I, I want to I wanna uplift my pastor today. Every week, he's sending out information about individuals who have lost loved ones. I pray and I ask, Father, that you will be with him, continue strengthening him. It's not an easy task to be a pastor leader in a church to deal with those circumstances and those trials. Father, I thank you for my past. I thank you for my church members. We need you, Father. We need you, Father. At this time, Father, we need you. It is, it's not an easy task for one to go through. But we are told if we take hold of Jesus' garment, he will surely put us through. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us, Father, from all our unrighteousness. And give us the power and the strength, Father, to lead someone to the cross. At this time, at this hour, this is what we need, Jesus. We have no answer. There will be no answer but Jesus Christ. We know this world is going to come to an end. We know that. Give us the power to let go of this wretched world 
and focus on you. In Jesus' name, I pray for every prayer request list on list, unspoken prayer request. I pray and I ask that you will be with every individual. You know what they're going through. You know their trial, their tribulation. But continue to hold on to one Father. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Heavenly Father is supreme. He is a rich God. He is our only God, and God is love. Love cannot be completed without the action of giving. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son to all of us, Jesus Christ then what can we give God? God is asking you and me to give our hearts and return his tithes. Give and it shall be given unto you. Giving and receiving goes together. This is the season of giving and receiving. Give more and you will be received abundantly. May God inspire us to give and receive his blessings. With this thought, I encourage and urge every one of you, give liberally so that you will be blessed more. At this time, Ministry in Music by Shadrach and Hannah Suresh.
Let us pray. Our gracious, loving Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to call thy name at this divine hour. We thank you for the care and the protection. Bless the Sabbath day and help us to keep it holy. We thank you for keeping us safe. There are so many people who are suffering from the pandemic. Heal them and bring them to normal health and console the people who lost their loved ones. Heavenly Father, it is our, your will. Please put an end to this disease. Bless the pastors and the members of this church. We also prefer the online givers. And please remember us when you come in the clouds of heaven. All these blessings we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, children, and you have a nice story prepared by Sabrina Roberts. I invite her to come and tell the story. Boys and girls, happy Sabbath. It's been a long, long, long time since I've seen you guys. I really miss you all, but you're every in my, you're, all of you are in my prayers every day. And I thank God for keeping you all safe. So one morning, Rebecca, she looked outside her window, and she saw it snowing. And it was such a beautiful day, and she saw all the kids playing. And she went to her dad and said, Daddy, can I go out and play in the snow? And he said, not today, Rebecca. I said, please, Dad, the kids are having so much of fun. It's for your good, Rebecca, not today. <coughs> Rebecca loved her dad so much. They had a good relationship. So she kissed her dad on, her on his cheeks and went to her bedroom. And as she was looking out, she sort of changed her mind. She could see the kids having so much of fun. And she was deciding more to go out and play. And then the kids started throwing snowballs at her window, and that made her even more excited. So what she did, she quietly slipped out of her house, and she went to play with the other kids. She thought she was happy, but she was actually a little sad because she knew she disobeyed her dad, and she was worried if her dad is going to come and see her. But after a few hours, she went up to her house, and she quickly ran up the stairs to go to her bedroom. But she didn't see a little one mitten, that's a glove, on the step. And she slipped on the step, and she fell. And when she came down the steps sliding, she hit her head on the wall, and there was a picture frame that was there, and it cracked. And that was Daddy's favorite picture. And usually when Rebecca falls, she will run to her Daddy, and Daddy will hug her and you know, clean her up and put a Band-Aid and she's all good. But this time, she didn't want to go to Daddy because she knows she did something wrong. So she took the picture frame and went running to her bedroom. She closed the door and she was crying and crying. She was sad because she broke the picture frame and she was in pain because she hurt her head. She cried all several hours. And then her nanny came to her and said, Rebecca, Go down and tell Daddy you're sorry. But he's not going to love me like before. And he's, he's going to be so mad with me. And the nanny said, Rebecca, you've messed up so many times. You disobeyed Dad several times. And he always forgave you and loved you. So why don't you go? And so she said, yes, you're right. So she took the picture frame and slowly walked down the steps. And when she looked, Daddy was looking at her. And his arms were wide open with a big smile. And he said, Rebecca, I was waiting. When were you going to come down? Come, come sit on my lap. 
And Rebecca felt so miserable. She was guilty. And she said, Daddy, I did something wrong. I broke your favorite picture frame. Rebecca, I know it. What? You know it? How did you know you were at work? I said, no, Rebecca. I saw it all. I know everything. I took the day off to spend time with you today. So I saw you when you left the house, when you came up, when you fell. I was just waiting for you to come to me when you fell and tell Daddy uh, so I could take care of your wounds. But when you fell, you didn't come to me. But instead, you went away. So I was waiting for you to come to me. And Rebecca said, felt so miserable because she loves hanging out with her dad because they both read stories together, they read books, they played games, they had a good, loving relationship. And she felt so terrible that she disobeyed her dad and caused so much of pain. And she said, Daddy, how can you love me even though I disobeyed you? And her daddy said, Rebecca, I loved you before you were born. And when you were born, and even now, and I will always love you. Yes, you are going to be disobedient. You are going to mess up. And it's going to hurt you really bad. But remember, come to me. I am always there waiting for you, even when you mess up. Because nothing, nothing can separate you from my love. So kids, boys and girls, Rebecca felt so good. And her daddy said, come to me. Let me take care of you now. Boys and girls, remember, when you're disobedient, when you do something wrong, don't be afraid to go to Jesus and tell him you're sorry. Because he's waiting. He's just waiting with his arms wide open. He wants to hear from you, and he wants you to say you're sorry. And he's always there to love you and forgive you and accept you because he loves you so very much. Remember that always. Let us pray now. A loving Father, Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for giving us the confidence that even when we mess up, that we can come to you and ask you and tell you we're sorry and that you will love us again. Keep us safe, dear Jesus, until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Be safe until we meet again. Good morning and a very happy Sabbath to one and all. Um, I firstly want to thank God and our pastor for giving me this opportunity. Um, we all go through ups and downs, and we all have our own stories in our personal lives. And coming to my life and my family's life, we all know how 2020 has been, and we all know what is going through this pandemic, um, the vaccine, virus, and everything. And my family was part of it as well. My parents and my sister were COVID positive, and it was so serious. And my sister was so serious than my parents, and I almost thought I would lose my little sister. But by the grace of God, they're all safe and sound, and I thank each one of you for praying for them. And, and personally, in my life also, I've been through lots, ups and downs. And thank you for praying for me, and I've almost thought that I was I was going into depression, and I went, doctors said I was um, like I had brain tumor, brain, and everything, something with brain. And but by the grace of God, it took two years for me to recover completely, and I'm all good now. And the song that I'm going to sing is in English, Telugu, and Malayalam. And the meaning of the song is nothing but God is greater than everybody, and. There's no other God other than Him. He's the Alpha Omega. You deserve the glory and the honor Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name. You 
deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Mahima Kupatruga. Ganata kuar huda, mi nama munbati, ma cetulete dam, mahima ku patruda. Ganata kuar huda, mi nama munbati, ma cetulete dam, mahona tuda. Agutalu che yuara nila lere varu nila lere varu mahona tura agutalu che yuara nila lere varu nila le. Certainly our God needs to be worshipped. We lift our hands and worship because you are indeed great. There is no one else like you and there is no one beside you. 
Melvin, thank you so much for reminding us, the great God that we worship. I also would like to thank Shadrach and Hannah for blessing with the instrumental. This is my father's world. Lord is king. Let the heavens reign. Why? But God reigns eternally. May the Lord richly bless each one of these young people as they continue to use their talents for God's glory. I'd like to join hands with the elders of the Remnant Church and the youth pastor, Regis Samuel, to welcome all of you for a divine hour. We are so happy that you have joined us in different parts of the world. We want to thank God for his protection, just to be in the land of the living, while thousands are dying all around the world. It's nothing but God's grace and God's mercies. And so don't take anything for granted. And God deserves our worship and our praise because we were made just for that. So please, make sure that every minute of your day that you praise God. Have a word of praise on your lips at all times. We do have a few visitors' names that has been presented to us. We'd like to welcome them. We have Ponzi from Africa, from Becky, and then Stacy Ann Martin, Delicia Maxwell, Joseph Surrelly, Leon Bess, Sheetal Singh, Prasad Mehdi from Hyderabad, Maurice Madhu from Pune, Jane Subhadra from Redding, California, Pradeep Suranjan from Bangalore, India, Mary Mathai, Clara McCoy, Linster Rittman, Sony Bhavani, Kaben Kuira, and Ursula Nathan. Thank you so much for joining. And the other names that I did not get it, we want you to know that we are privileged because you have all the options to go to different websites, but you have chosen to be part of the Remnant Church, and so we want to thank you for being part of the extended family of the Remnant Church. May the Lord richly bless you and keep you and always walk beside the still waters. We do have a few announcements I'd like to bring to your attention. The flowers that we have here, the beautiful arrangement, I'd like to thank Sue Benjamin and Rachel and Sarika for taking time to set up this beautiful arrangement here. It is presented to us from, for Prithika's birthday from their parents, Prashant and Anshika, and of course, Nishant and Pooja, and the grandparents and Maxwell and Juju. They'd like to thank God for Prithika and for the joy that, they bring, that she brings to the family and to each one of us. Prithika, may the Lord richly bless you as you celebrate this beautiful birthday in your life. As it was announced, the citrus fruits, we are expecting them this week. And so please look out for the text messages that we'll be sending out. Because we are not too sure, but the truck might arrive this week. And so we will surely inform you well in advance so you can come and pick them up from the campus here. So although, and those who have not ordered, you still have time. Please, we have ordered a few more. Get in touch with me or Mr. Surinder Moses so that we'll be able to provide you the citrus fruits during this season. We started our caroling on, on December 1st, and we'll be going through, in, including today. So kindly keep this ministry in your prayers so that the Lord would bless. Not only the singers who come here, who sing from here, but also the homes that are going to be blessed. Because more than anything else, we need the blessing of Jesus and the blessing of God, especially the news of the good hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We also would like to thank every one of you for your patience, for your support, and for your praise. Thank you for your giving. Just this week, I received two envelopes, one from Ivana Fillmore from Florida, saying that, Pastor, we have been blessed by this ministry, and here is a small contribution. And so we want to thank you, Anna, for your willingness to give for the expansion of God's kingdom from this place. I also got another letter, another Letter from Barbara from California. She also is a pastor. I am blessed by the ministry of the Remnant Church. I watch every week. And so here is a small contribution towards the ministry. Barbara, thank you so much. And so we do have people, not only our own members and well-wishers from even all around the world, who are blessed by this ministry and they like to be part of it. And for those of you who would like to come on board, you're welcome to do so. Just go on our website and there is also, you can give, give online and then you can do whatever little you can. Little drops of water makes a mighty wash. So thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for so much for your ministry. And we want you to know that you, every one of you are in our prayers. Me as a pastor, I take time to pray for all of you because we need God's guidance more than ever before. This evening, our praise and praise service, those of you who join us on a very regular basis, please keep the change in timings. It's not going to be 4.30, but it's going to be 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock is going to be a praise and praise service. Please, please do join us for that. It's always true. God loves you.
This morning, we are privileged to have Elder Emmanuel Asidu. He's not a stranger to the pulpit here. He has come a few times. He is the treasurer of our Columbia Union Conference, located right here in Columbia. A young man, but the Lord has blessed him abundantly. Came with very few, just $500 and almost empty by the time he reached the campus of, of Loma Linda. After his studies there, he worked for the general conference at the, the auditing department. He was also associate treasurer of the Chesapeake Conference. And the Lord led him through, and now he is the treasurer of one of the biggest unions in the North American division, Columbia Union. The Lord has richly blessed his ministry. The Lord has used him mightily, and it's my prayer that as he breaks the bread of life, that the Holy Spirit will take control of him, and that he will lead each one of us beside the still waters. Again, I want to assure you, in the midst of uncertainties, our God is a loving God. Our scripture this morning is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, and it reads, have I, not, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. May the Lord bless the scripture that I just read. Happy Sabbath. Happy, happy Sabbath. It is always good to come to the house of the Lord. And I always feel happy anytime I get the opportunity to come to this church. Because one thing that I've observed for the few times that I've been here is that this church is warm, the people here are kind, and they are friendly and loving. So I always thank God for, for you and for what you have been doing. And so this morning, I bring you greetings from Columbia Union. And on behalf of our president, Elder Dave Wigley, and our executive secretary, Elder Rob Vanderman, we want to thank you for all that you do. And I just want to like to thank you especially for your sacrificial service that you have been performing, especially in your giving, in these times of uncertainty, in these times of hardship, in these times of tribulation, if you still continue to give, it means God's hand is upon you. And so I would like to thank you for your faithfulness and for all that you have been doing for this church. And I would like also to thank my pastor, Pastor John, for giving me the invitation for me to come and fellowship with you. And I always pray that God will continue to bless you. So my family, they are home, and they also wish they could have come here and worship with you in person, but they also send their greetings to all of you. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today we have come here in your holy temple to worship, to praise your name. As we have come, as we are, we are asking for your special blessings to be upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. So today we are going to look at a topic, and the title of my sermon is Confidence in Adversity. Confidence in Adversity. I like Paul, and I like the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 1, verse 6, Paul makes a very bold statement. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is power of God for the salvation of all who believe. 
So according to Paul, God has power to bring salvation. In the gospel, power is not just about God saving us to heaven. It is about what God can also do in this world to make a significant impact in our lives. It is about what God can do to manifest his power, to bring his healing power to those who are afflicted, to those who are suffering from cancer, to those who are going through diseases, to those who are currently struggling in COVID. God has power to bring relief to those individuals. And power in Romans is also power to bring relief to those who are going through trials and tribulation. Also power to bring relief to those who are going through immigration issues. Power to bring relief to those who are going through issues in their families. Those who are going through issues in their jobs. So God has power to do anything and everything. That is why Paul says he's not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God. And I like the gospel because even in Jeremiah 32 verse 27, Jeremiah 32 verse 27, God makes important declaration of himself. He said that I'm God of all mankind. And then he asked himself a question. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? So here God is saying that he is omnipotent God. Meaning that he has power, he has ability to do anything and everything according to his will. I just want to tell you today that God doesn't need anybody's permission to perform his power, to use his power. He doesn't need any executive board to make a decision before he makes or he uses his power. He doesn't need the permission from the government to use his power. He doesn't even need the permission of your husband or your boss at work. He has the power and he can use it any time he deems it fit. That is why he makes that declaration of himself. That is there anything too hard for the Lord? And so today, we are going to look at confidence in adversity. Friends, I just want to tell you that there are two types of confidence. There's one confidence when you see the light at the end of the tunnel. There's one confidence when you see that you have seen your results and you have passed. There's one confidence when the doctors tell you and they call you and they say, Hey, sir, you are now cancer-free. God has delivered you. That's one type of confidence. And there's one confidence where everything is lined up. Your expectation is in line with what God is doing in your life. There's one confidence where you get a letter saying that now you have promotion. You have been promoted. There's one confidence where your dream job, the things that you have always wanted, you have received. There's one confidence. That is not a confidence that I want to talk about today. Whilst that confidence is important, it builds our strength, it gives us faith, it helps us to get closer to God. Whilst it is very important, that is not a confidence I would like to talk with you today. Because I just want to tell you that we are serving a God who is more powerful than anything and everything. It doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter your trial. It doesn't matter your tribulation. It doesn't matter how difficult and impossible your situation look. I just want to tell you that we are serving a God who is above that. So today I would like to talk to you about Joshua, the book of Joshua. I like the book of Joshua, the entire book. It's a constant reminder of what God will do for his people. If we remain committed to him and we allow him to lead our lives. It's a reminder about what God can do if you give him the permission, if you are committed to him, and if you tell him to take charge of our lives. 
That is what the book of Joshua is about. And the book of Joshua, the scripture that our sister read for us, the entire chapter 1 is just only 18 verses. Joshua 1, chapter 1 to chapter 18. Uh, verse 18. 1 to 18 are only 18 verses. But when you read the entire chapter 1, God reminds Joshua three times about be courageous, be strong, be courageous, be strong. And I was asking myself, why is it that only one chapter with only 18 verses God will spend time to remind Joshua three times about be courageous, be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous, be strong. That means that it's very important to God. God is not going to talk to Joshua about you getting a report that is positive. He is preparing Joshua about the task ahead. In this world, is full of trouble. When you look at Job, Job chapter 14, verse 1. Job 14, verse 1. Job makes a statement. He said, man born of a woman is of few days. But his life is full of trouble. And I believe that all of you will agree with me. That this world that we are living in, it is full of trouble. Now, there are cancers that people are going through. I know several individuals that are going through cancer. People that we have eaten with. People that we have associated with. People that we have played soccer with. People that we have dealt with in one way or the other. Even in this church, some of our members are going through difficult health challenges. So what Job is saying, it is true. So many people have died of COVID. There are so many people who are unemployed. There are so many people who are going through various challenges and tribulations and trials. So what Job is saying, it is true. So God had to remind Joshua three times to be strong and courageous. Because the fight ahead is not easy. But as long as God is with us, we will always be remain victorious. It doesn't matter how the challenge is. It doesn't matter how complicated it is. It doesn't matter how impossible it is. As long as God is with us. Because the battle is of the Lord. It's not about you fighting the battle. It's about God fighting the battle. So that's why God has to make a profound statement, a profound declaration of himself, that is there anything too hard for the Lord? I don't know what you are going through today. I don't know the challenges that you are dealing with. I don't, I don't know the impossibilities that you are going through. But today, I just want to tell you, as long as God sits on his throne, as long as God has power, as long as God knows you by name, whatever you are going through, he has power to intervene and he doesn't need anybody's permission to do that. Because we are serving a God who is superior to anything and everything. So you are going to look at Joshua. Joshua, when God selected Joshua, he was a young boy. He had no experience. He had no management experience. He had no leadership experience. He doesn't even know how to lead the people. And now God is going saying, Joshua, I have an important task for you. I want you to go and lead these people that are difficult to deal with. These people who are sometimes unappreciative of what I've done. These people who are always complaining. I want you to lead these people to the land that God, I have selected for them. It was a difficult task. Beyond dealing with his own people, Joshua also had to deal 
with the issues outside the camp of Israel. Now we have to deal with Jordan River. Now we have to deal with the people of Jericho. Those who are giants, as we, as we saw in Romans, in, in Numbers, in Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, when, Joshua, when Moses sent the spies, when they went there and they surveyed the place, Jericho, and they came back with a report, and they said, Sir, the land is a great land. There are so many opportunities there. There are so many food that we can eat. There are so many things. The land looks fertile. It looks fine. Everything seems okay. But there are giants there. That when we look at them, we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Can you imagine that? The fact that we look at them in the eye, we see ourselves as grasshoppers. And it wasn't just one person who said that. It wasn't two people who said that. It wasn't three people. Ten people said that. Can you imagine how intimidating it must have looked? So Joshua is aware of those giants that are there. And the fact that Israel, they had no ammunition. They have no tools. How are you going to face these giants? And beyond that, there's a war. Great war that surrounds the city of Jericho. How are you going to break through? Even if for somehow I'm able to encourage these people, I'm able to work with them, we are able to go and cross the river, Jordan, which seems impossible. How are we going to penetrate through the walls of Jericho? How are you going to do that? So the task ahead seems impossible. So that's why God had to remind Joshua three times. Today, I just want to tell you, in adversities, in challenges, in trials, in tribulation, in sickness, in diseases, they are difficult. They are huge. They seem impossible. Can you imagine getting a letter from your doctor saying that you have six months to live? Your cancer has developed to a stage that there's nothing we can do medically. Can you see how daunting that report will look like? That is the same situation that Joshua was going through. It wasn't easy. It was difficult. But what did God do? That's why I'm going to tell you that we are serving a God who is powerful, that he can do anything, he can do everything, he doesn't need anybody's permission. He doesn't need your wife's permission. He doesn't need the government of the United States' permission. He will do it when his time comes. It doesn't matter how impossible it is. Because when you look at Luke chapter 1, verse 37, it says, with God, all things are possible. He, says, he didn't say some things are possible. He didn't say, oh, these few things are possible. Or he didn't say, oh, oh, these sides are okay. He said, all things. And I just want to tell you, all things mean all things. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter even if you look at this problem and you, you look like a grasshopper in the face of your own problem. Because God doesn't look like a grasshopper when he looks like a problem. Because he has power to deal with it. And he has done it before. Because of who God is. That is why I always have confidence. Because in Psalm, when you look at Psalm, chapter 41, verse 3. Psalm 41, verse 3. God is saying that I'm the God who sustains you in your sick bed. And I restore you. I give you recovery from your sickbed. That means that God has power over every disease and every sickness. And there's evidence in the Bible where Jesus healed 
a lot of people. So God has power over that. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10. God had to remind the people of Israel that I am God who provides for you. So God said, when you eat and you are well fed, don't forget the Lord your God. That means God is also interested in our material things. God is interested that I get fed. He is interested that I'll be able to find food and feed my family. God is interested in that. That is why he reminded the people of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10, that when you eat and you are well fed, do not forget the Lord your God. That means your Lord God will provide all the food that you need. He will provide the sustenance that we need. He will provide the shelter that you need. He will provide the clothing that you need. So that means that if I am lacking money, finances, whatever, for my shelter, for my food, for whatever, for my electricity bill, even though in the face of man, it looks daunting, it is impossible, I'm going to be homeless. But God can come in and he can turn the situation around. He doesn't need anybody's permission to do that. That is why I have confidence that we can trust him. That is why in adversity, we can still remain confident. We can remain confident in adversity. And adversities come in different ways. There are some individuals that currently, the adversity that they are going through is their health challenge. The doctors have told them this is the cancer report that we are dealing with. We need to do this chemo. The, pers- the possibility of you surviving is 2%, is 10%, it's whatever. You have family members that are struggling with COVID. Some people are also going through stroke. There are so many illnesses that are going on. Those are their trials, the afflictions, the adversities that God's people are going through. How can you still remain confident in that? It doesn't make sense to remain confident in your trials, in your adversities, in your challenges. It's very easy for me to have confidence in the Lord when things are lining up. When I'm told that my green card has been approved. There's confidence in the Lord. Uh, My confidence will build up because God has done it. There's confidence when I see that The woman that I've always wanted to marry, now the lady has agreed to marry me. There's confidence in that. When I received a report that the the nursing uh, certification that I was looking for, the iron license, whatever, I have passed the exam. There's confidence in that because you see it. There's evidence of what God has done for you. So your confidence is built up. What about you are going through your trials, your challenges, your difficulties, and you still don't see the hand of God in your life? Sometimes your soul is downcast within you. What do you do? As as, uh, Psalm 43 verse 5 says, my soul is downcast within me because I see God being silent in my life. What should I do in that circumstance? I just want to tell you today, because of who God is, If you give God permission to come into your life, to lead and direct your life, whatever it is, God will come through, and then you look back some years back and you say, God did it. In as much as you should have confidence when things are going well and everything's lined up, you should have the same confidence when things don't go well according to your plan. Because after all, Romans 8, 28 tells us, All things work together for good. And all things include all things. It includes the doctors telling me that my cancer has developed to stage 4 and I won't be able to have a cure. It's part of all things. But even in my stage 4 cancer, whatever it is, God can still intervene if God wants you to be cured of it. Because after all, he is the one that created you. That is why in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, 
Paul makes a very important statement there. He's saying that as Christians, we don't live by sight, but we live by faith. I have the faith, I have the assurance that no matter what the situation is, God is going to take me through. Because he had done it before. You will not be the first person that has gone through the trials and the tribulation. Whatever that you are going through, some people have gone through before. And God is saying that whatever the trials that come to you, there's always a way of escape. God will orchestrate things behind the scenes. That is why as Christians, we need to commit all our lives to him. In order for me to remain confident in my trials, in my afflictions, in my difficulties, I need to learn to cast all my burdens onto him. All my burdens onto him. 1 Peter 5 verse 7. God is saying that learn to cast all your burdens onto me because I care. God cares about you. He knows you. Even in Jeremiah, Lamentation, Lamentation uh, 31. Even Lamentation 3, 31 and 32. 3, 31 and 32. God said, God does, man, man is not cast off forever. Even though grief will come, I will still show compassion. Because God knows that as long as we live in this world, grief will come. Sorrow will come. Challenges, difficulties will come. But I will show compassion. Because he loves you. Can you imagine God creating you, creating you in his own image, and his own likeness? So that means that he has a particular interest in your life. You may not see it, I may not see it. The doctor may not see it. Your wife may not see it. Your family may not see it. But God can see it. That is why we should always learn to live by faith, not by sight. Because it's very easy to have confidence and faith when you live by sight. When I see it. When I see that now I'm medically healed. Now I have the job. Now I have passed the exam. Now I'm on, I'm, everything is lining up with my plan. I can have confidence in that because I see it. But God doesn't work like that. He wants us to trust him even though we cannot see it. Because there's nobody that God has taken, that God is leading, that God has left the person astray. God will never do that. So God had to remind Joshua, Joshua, now you are going to go to Jericho. You are now going to take, the, take possession of the land. Yes, I understand that the giants are there. Now I understand that there's Jordan. Now I, don't know, I know that you don't have floating device. But I'm going to take you there. And when you read the entire book, you could see that even when they got close to, uh, to, to the river Jordan, it was overflowing. They had no floating device. I don't think they have even learned how to swim. How are we going to cross this river? It was impossible. But God is saying that because I have called you by my name, because I know you, because I've written your name in my palm, as Isaiah 49 verse 16 tells us, because you are engraved in my palm, because I know you, the challenge that is in front of you, I'm going to take you through it. I just want to tell you, God can create a path where there is no path. Can you imagine creating a path, a highway in river? At that time, there was no bridge for them to cross. But God made it possible. He created a path in Jordan. And every single one of them was able to cross over. So when something seems daunting, when something seems impossible, when something seems it cannot be done, just give God a trial. Just tell him, God, this is the situation I'm dealing with. This is the problem that I'm facing. It is not possible. The, uh, even the government will look at it and say, sir, it's not possible. 
give it to God. Because the government is not God. The doctor is not God. The lawyer is not God. Your employer is not God. So give it to the hands of God. Let's see what God could do. God was able to take them through the Jordan River. And not just that. Once they crossed it, they saw that there was a huge wall surrounding the city of Jericho. What are we going to do? The complainers will start complaining. Yes, God has done the phase one. What, is, what about the phase two? How are we going to penetrate through the wall? And God had to remind them, the battle is still of the Lord. Just stay calm and see the salvation of the Lord. And God said, this wall that you see it, I know that to you it's impossible. I know there's no way you'll be able to go through. You don't even have the key to open the gate. But I'm not going to get the key and open the gate for you. I'm going to let you enter this in an extraordinary way. The way that it seems impossible by any means or measure. I'm going to let you go through this in a way that will constantly remind you of my power. The doubters there, or the complainers, or people who didn't have faith, they would have said, God, can we have like a bomb? Can we have like ammunition where you'll be able to shoot through the walls so that I can know that, yes, it's true. We will be able to break the walls down. Or God, for somehow, would you be able to go and get the key for us so that we'll be able to put it in the, in the key at the gate, turn it, and then open it? God had to tell them that you need to still have faith. Don't live by sight. Always live by faith. Once I brought you through the Jordan, I'm going to take you through the walls. And I want to tell you, it was only singing that broke the walls of Jericho. Only singing. Can you imagine that? Singing, breaking the walls, it is impossible. You'll be able to stand here and sing and sing and sing and these walls will be there. But God is saying, I'm not going to let you push it. Let us all stand and try to push the wall down. God, all that I will let you do, just stand here, just sing and shout. And the walls of Jericho will come down. That is why I have confidence that even in your adversity, even in your challenges, even in the times that you don't even know what to do, you will still be able to depend on him. Because we are serving a God who can do anything. And as the Bible says it, the walls of Jericho came down by just singing and shouting. By just singing and shouting. Even though the Israelites, they had no ammunition, they had no weapons, they had nothing. They were able to go through to capture the land that God had prepared for them. Because God had already fought the battle. The battle had already been fought. God has already won. And he just wants them to go through and take possession of it. So today I just want to tell you that no matter what you are going through, I don't know how difficult it is. I'm not saying that it is, it is easy. I'm not saying that it's, it, it is not hurting. I'm not saying that it is not difficult. What I'm saying is that let's give it to God's hands. Let's tell God to take over. And I remember when I was coming to this country, I've always said it before. Because it was not possible. How can I come to the United States and go to school and finish my degree and pay zero? It's not possible. Even some of my friends were telling me that, Emmanuel, you are crazy. It's never done that way. We need to have the money in the bank to be able to pay and go to school. And I, went, and I told him, I said, I don't care. All that I care is that if God wants me to go to school there, God will take care of it. And they were like, how is he going to do it? Give us evidence. Show us. Has anybody given you a scholarship? Has anybody paid money into your account? Has anybody done this? Has anybody done that? And I said, I haven't seen anybody doing anything. But that is not my concern. 
that is something for God to worry about. All that I have to worry about is to take, take him at his word. Say, God, this is my situation. I don't know how it is possible. But I'm going to take you at your word, and I'm going to go in faith. And I finished school, and the school even owed me $500. Okay? So I would have had faith if the school, before I started, they had given me a full scholarship or they had a huge bank account. Then I would have said, yes, it's possible. Yeah, you know, God can do it. Yeah, God is doing it. But what about when you are studying with zero? That is why God is saying that he wants us to live by faith. Because he has personal interest in your life. He knows you by name. He knows you. He knows everything about you. And he's always thinking about you. So as I bring my sermon today to a close, I just want you to understand that the same way God was able to lead Joshua through the Jordan River, through the walls of Jericho, for them to capture the city. The same way that God will be able to lead you through your situation. So that at the end of the day, God will be able to resolve the issues that you are dealing with. So don't be intimidated by the medical report. Don't be sad that the doctors are saying that the cancer has come back. Don't be sad that today you are, you are part of the statistics of those who have COVID or even those who are part of those who are unemployed. Don't worry about that because God knows it. And once we give it to him, for somehow he'll be able to work together. And then at the end of the day, you are going to look back and you will say God has done it, just like he did for Joshua. So today, that is a message I want to leave with you. Have confidence in your adversity. Have confidence in your trials. Have confidence in your tribulation. And know that God is there and God will be with you. May God have mercy of you today. And God come through and save you and bring you peace in the situation that you are going through. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn of dedication for this afternoon will be hymn number 528, A Shelter in the Time of Storm, hymn number 528.
It is time for us to pray and commit all our worries into the hands of God. I just want to tell you and encourage you today to cast whatever you are going through to God. And have the faith that God will come through no matter what. So you know what you are going through. Just tell God, God, this is what I'm going through. And I'm casting it to you. I don't know how to deal with it, but I want you to come through. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, today we have come before you. Claiming your promises. Believing that you are still, you are still on your throne. And you still have power to do anything and everything. And so today, I want to commit those who are listening into your hands. You know the challenges, the difficulties that you are going through, the trials, the tribulation, the difficult report that they have received. Lord, as we are casting, as we are letting them go, as we are living in your hands, I pray that, Lord, you will answer each and every one according to their need. So that your name, God, will be praised all the time. I pray that, Lord, today will be a testimony in their lives. That they sought you, they found you, you answered them. May you, Lord, be with them and bless them. Those who are going through illnesses, cancer, situations, may you, Lord, heal them miraculously. Those who need jobs, going through immigration issues, and all other issues that people are going through. You know them. As they leave them in your hands, may you, Lord, answer them. So that every day, everywhere, we can testify that you, Lord, did it. And give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello Church, what we learned from Elder Emmanuel's message is that we can have confidence in whatever situation we encounter if we trust God and commit our lives to Him. We have an example of the story in Joshua. In chapter 1, just 18 verses, God reminds Joshua three times to remain courageous and strong. You know, the fight ahead of us is never easy, but if God is with us, we have the assured victory. The battle is the Lord's. Sickness, pain, health challenges, joblessness, and financial difficulties and even physical difficulties, they are all giants that we seem to encounter in our life. We should have the confidence in adversity, the same confidence that we have when things seem to be going all right in our life, because God will carry us through. God cares about each one of us and takes a special interest in each and every one of our lives. Like the Jordan River, which seemed impossible for the Israelites to cross, there are many difficult rivers that we face. But like God let the Israelites walk across on dry ground, God will make a path for us to get through. We serve a God who can do anything and everything. I would also like to remind you that the Media Ministries needs our help. Our need for your financial support, support is urgent and eminent. Please support the Media Ministries financially and continue to pray for us so we can continue to bring these services to people like you. Again, I would like to remind you that our praise and prayer service will be taking place at 4 o'clock. That's 4 p.m. this afternoon. Thank you for being part of the Remnant Seventh-day Adventist Church. May God bless each one of you.